Hello, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar. Colt Nost, Drew Stoltz. Hope everyone had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Hopefully, you went over to our YouTube page, subscribed, liked, all that. And by the way, go to fairwayjockey.com, pick up some Birdie Juice merch from now and through this Friday. Everything 75% off sleeves, which you know what that means. 25% on. What a That's deal. it. That's the best way to wear it, too. 25% on. Hell of a deal right now. Things are going quickly. Get over there. Scoop yourself something. Good time. Perfect. Black Friday. Holidays. holidays Sleezen's greetings. All that. All right. Well, it was a big week for your man, Min Woo Lee. How about the kid? I know one of your dream guests. Yeah. Your subpar. Love We've got to get Min Woo on the show, but picking up a win over at the Australian PGA. I love the kid. I love the kid for a number of reasons. A, I'm thrilled he's going to be on the PGA Tour full time this year. I think he's about to have a monster coming out party. From the times we've seen him, he's played well. He's played well in big events, almost won the players. He's played well in, in his major championships and the brief, you know, tenure that he's had in those things as well. But like his personality is awesome. He had the chef hat on after, let him cook, all that type of stuff. But his actual golf game is spectacular. His golf swing is about as good as they come loaded with talent loaded with power he's got all the things checks all the boxes i look for him to have a monster year but that was awesome to see him uh win down there and i believe this week is it he and his sister are both the betting favorites yeah down at the australian the, open so yeah, they, they play at the same fam. time good fan the men and the women yeah and they're both the betting favorites over there so that'll be cool to watch he's he's a superstar in the making man he's got all the game reminds me a lot of anthony kim got the flair got the personality got some juice uh, I love it. So it'll be interesting to see. And he has 190 mile an hour ball speed. That also helps. Doesn't hurt. Going to be a nice little scoop for the uh, International President's Cup team. That'll be a nice help. And man, finished top five at the U.S. Open. Finished T6 at the Players last year. So he's, he's not scared of the big moment. That's a, I, what I think is probably the best in his short time playing in these big events. I mean, he's young. He's only 25. But, like, he's played well in the big events, which is, I think is just part of that's just, like, intangibles. Where Despite where your golf game is, if it's ready to win on that level, like, do you show up and play well to your capabilities in those events? He's done it. I think he'll continue to do so the more comfortable he gets. And it's not just, like, one-off events. How, oh, here's a big chance. Um, look out for this kid this year. I hope he I hope he takes the world by storm. He's awesome. I'll tell you what wasn't comfortable. The little Twitter exchange between Alan Shipnuck and Phil Mickelson. They're still not they're getting along, it. believe it or not. They didn't, they're not giving thanks for one another during the time of thanks. No, they are not. I mean, it came out... Rumors that John Rahm possibly going to live for six hundred million dollars. A lot of different sources saying it's it's going to happen. Well, Alan Shipnuck, obviously, they have quite the history. Came out and said he's hearing Phil is telling people it's a done deal. Tweeted it. Obviously, Phil saw it. Didn't really appreciate it. Said he's not talking to anyone about it. Hasn't heard anything about it. And Alan Shipnuck's the biggest liar he's ever met and a pathetic human. And a POS, I believe. If I that remember. was in the next tweet. That was the second tweet. Yes. Yeah, there was a string of and them. There were some Elmer Fudd references in there. Yeah, it was an interesting tweet. Hard to believe those two aren't seeing eye to eye yet at this point. Uh, I saw that stuff and like, here's my take on this: is like, when you're releasing news like that, it's going to be as big as it is in like the global world of golf you're talking about one of the stars in the world of golf like john rom potentially going to live they're in the final stages of discussions and things like that if you just put out like sources say it may very well be true he might be saying he, he might be hearing that from 15 different people um but that's a big news to drop with just sources i hate i understand why people don't want their names behind it but it's like it feels like one of those things where if I'm coming with this, like I need to have some people that are ready to go on the record and back me up because clearly Phil's going to dispute it, which he did. And it becomes like, who do you believe at this point? And it's just like, it doesn't really like we got no clarity on anything. Alan's saying one thing, Phil's saying another thing. Like, who do you believe? What do you do? I just in the world of Twitter where everyone can be a reporter and ship nuts, obviously like an actual journalist. So it's different. But like, it's just hard to know what to believe anymore. And and they don't like each other personally, so it's like, all right, is this a vendetta? Just wants to put Phil out there again, or it's, would Phil even own up to it if he said, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just it just feels like a lot of noise. Yeah, this is just one of the many things that sucks with social media. That sucks with what's going on with Live and the PGA Tour. It's like people just throw stuff out there, and it's some of it's true, some of it's not. We don't know what it is. All of a sudden, you see a tweet, and it's from some. Some account you've never even heard of, but everybody's like, oh my God, look at this. This is happening. That idiot made up the thing about me being investor in cliques. Which like, you just, are. Which you just need to go no clean cliques. about that. <laughs> but, you know, it's obviously a big deal when you're talking about, like you said, one of the biggest superstars in the game going over to live for possibly $600 million. Don't know if any of it's true. I I, I reached out to John Rahm, asked him. He's like, dude, I've dealt with this so many times. Um, I don't know where they get their information. I don't know what's going on. I'm yeah. Like, okay, well. That's that's coming right from John Rom. So I don't and obviously he's not gonna be like, oh yeah, 
I'm going. Um, it's actually it's 610 million. Yeah, it's going to be They're announced in two months, but I'll go ahead and tell you that's not going to happen. I know that, but it's just it's just so frustrating when people just throw stuff out there, hope they're right, and if they're not, nothing happens. And I'm not saying that that's what Shipnuck's doing. Like he may have very no, well heard all. it from ten people saying Phil told me this directly. But unless you have like proof, where you're like, okay, are you willing to go on a record? Can I use your name? Like according to this source and according to this source that heard it from Phil at this place. John Rahm is in the final stages with Liv. It's just if you can't validate it, you know it's just going to be like one camp over here, one camp over here, and arguing, and then nothing gets resolved. I just when it's that big in news, it kind of feels like if I'm going to say something, let's at least let me have my sources that will that will back up what I'm saying because everyone's going to question it if I just say unnamed or heard from. It's like it just opens it up, and then of course Phil comes in and is like, "I never said any of that," and I got to think like Phil at this point. He's been burned by Alan one time speaking to him where I'm sure he thought he was off the record. Alan thought he was on the record and, uh, you know, they had that whole dispute. I think he'd be very tight with what he would be saying right now, but you just, you don't know, but it was big news and it, yeah, shook it up. Hey, look, I enjoy it. It gives me something, something, it's something to entertain me. I sit back, I'd grab my Sincoro tequila and just check all the updates on Twitter. And There's no better way to scroll Twitter gotta than have with a little Sincoro. Sincoro. Yeah, get it just those, makes it get even those more entertaining. Thumbs. Those thumbs get a little more energy in them. And I'm happy mean? to be sitting across from you drinking my favorite podcasting cocktail, the Sincoro Club. It's easy to drink here on the course or in the clubhouse. The cocktail features Sincoro's Reposado Tequila, which is my favorite, and aged in Tennessee whiskey barrels for eight to ten months. Sincoro is the greatest tasting tequila because it's rich and delicious and has long, luxurious finish. This thing is a little tequila, a little soda, and an orange slice. The orange is a game changer in tequila sleeves. Drank this during Thanksgiving weekend, and it was delicious, amongst probably with your, others. Probably your best Thanksgiving of all time. Without question. Well, tell me what your greatest golf memory is. Oh, my God, dude. How much time, how much time do we have? The, the list is so long. <laughs> greatest golf memory, my accomplishment. I don't know. I guess, like, current day, probably the back-to-back -back silver medals at the USGA four ball, which a lot of people Colt, say is a, equals one win. I don't two know. Two silvers Just make a other, gold. Two, that's what they say. That's what they Science. say. But that's been fun recently. I mean... Yeah, going back, I guess my in my whole life, my favorite event, it's not the biggest in the world, Carl State Championship. Oh. And that thing. I was, that right. was the one as a kid. And well, it doesn't get any bigger than that, Well, bud. cheers to that. Let's have a little here's sip back of to our favorite Sinquila, yeah, Sincoro. Cheers, my man. Here's to you. And if you want to learn more about this delicious mm. cocktail and tequila, go to Sincoro.com. Follow them Instagram on Instagram at Sincoro. And go to your local spirit distributor to buy a bottle today. Nothing better than a little refreshing Sincoro. On a Monday afternoon. You know, it's the double whammy. <laughs> if you're looking good while you're doing it, which is what we're doing right now in our polo RLX gear, which, by the way, the RLX Golf Collection draws inspiration from the traditional aesthetic of polo, updating it to create a modern sensibility focused on performance-driven design. From sophisticated styles to the most technologically advanced fabrics available, RLX Golf is the ultimate in functional luxury and provides pieces that are ready for whatever the conditions bring on the course or off. Ralph Lauren is the official outfitter of the United States Ryder Cup team and partner of the AJGA. Ralph Lauren is proud to continue its sponsorship of golf ambassadors Andrea Lee, Billy Horschel, Davis Love III, Devin Bling, Doc Redman, Jonathan Bird, Nick Watney, Sean Foley, Smiley Kaufman, Todd Anderson, Tom Watson, Trevor Warblow, Troy Taylor III, Tyler Strafacci, and Zach Johnson. The RLX Golf Collection is available in select Ralph Lauren stores, exclusive private clubs and resorts, and online at Ralph Lauren dot com it's winter cashmere season zip up season is here it's getting a little chilly here in the, in the dale actually i know it's really it's tough me, for me it's turned me really soft like for me. 60 I, degrees i'm like oh my god arctic out here i've been turned nothing's turned i'm just soft and i own it well speaking of soft let's get to our guest this week mm. <laughs> because he is anything but y'all know him y'all love him y'all asked for more of him well we're bringing him back for a third episode we got Big Red, the beautiful Mike Commodore, in the building once again. The one man show, dude. He's as good as they come. People love him everywhere I go. When you get comedy back, when you get comedy, we're having him. It's an annual tradition. The, the big fella back in the building. Early Christmas gift for all you subpar listeners out there. Here's Mike Commodore. Okay, folks, back by popular demand. One of the most dynamic guests in the history of the show. Here, he's a Stanley Cup champion. He's a member guest champion. He's an mm. Uber driver extraordinaire back mm. in the flesh with back some new lettuce, day. I might add. The Michael. great Mike Commodore, the triple champ. On? How are you, brother? Doing so real good, good to see you again. Hello, Mike. Michael. Thank you. Colt, good, good to see you again. Seeing you the last couple days. Yeah. It's good to be back. 
can't believe this is the third time. I know. People love it. Must no one lying about popular slow, demand, dude. Slow times are going right when's now. That, uh, when's that <laughs> hockey guy? When's that commie? Yeah, yeah. When's he coming back? I appreciate yeah, it. It's nice be to around. be here. A little Monday afternoon. Yeah. Sip on a tequila. I wasn't Sincoro. really what planning on that, do? but that's fine. <laughs> You've probably been taking it easy of late, too. You know? Uh, you time know to get back in the pretty saddle. Yeah, yeah. I could floor it a little bit. I'll yeah, see how many of these I can get through in the next 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, exactly. What's been going on? You've been playing some golf? No, you know what? It's been pretty quiet on the golf front. I, uh, I, I've been in Calgary for the last six months, uh, home basing it there, but done there. Drove into town on Thursday. So other than uh, I haven't played golf, it's been a little bit. Golf courses close up there no matter the weather, about middle of October. And it, it's actually been real nice up there. Like you could have played last week. would be like, you know, a little cold, but it'd be like 55, 60 oh, degrees, which yeah. I think it might be here this weekend. Yeah. Like it wasn't bad, but the golf course is already closed, so you, you're not playing, but. Soft ass Canadians closing yeah, the so course. Yeah, soft, I know. Open that thing up, I'm paying my dues. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in Cana normally, it's in Canadian dollars. Yeah, so it's not a, Canadian, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's like not pesos, too. but. You normally um, have a bunch of trips, like you're normally like all over the place, you go to Europe, do all this stuff. What do you, you got anything coming up or? Yeah, I got, a, I got one coming up. Uh, the summer, you know what? I made a conscious effort this year to slow it down a touch mm, a that's not bit. like you i know but i was sitting there i'm like you know i'm spending pretty good money to rent these furnished places. i don't own anything right now so i'm just kind of living i've been living on a suitcase for about three years and i'm like why am i spending all this money on this furnished rental here in calgary and i'm gone the whole time like i should just get a storage unit and just get a hotel when i'm in town so i slowed it down a little bit did have some trips so did the usual penticton i did the chuck wagon out in kansas city with mike again and then that is about it for trips, but I do have one coming up this weekend. Um, heading Cabo, Cabo, yeah, as Decker says that'll be my yeah Cabo, our good Canadian friend Decker. Um, yeah, fly in Thursday, and it's actually going to be a little different. Jeremy Roenick's putting the trip on. It's my first. Oh, that time. should be a nice way to calm it down for oh, a bit. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> real Jay calm. Yeah, he'll, that'll be this will be chill. Is it? Yeah, book, there won't book, be book much meeting? drinking. Yeah, um, but it's going to be a little different than my normal uh, trips. Fly in Thursday, and it's only 18 holes a day, which I'm actually kind of looking forward to because usually on these Ken Holland trips, it's like you land and it's run to the tee and run to golf all day till it gets dark and running around. So uh, 16 guys. We play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think he's he's got some games. You know, I think it's like a Ryder Cup type thing. There's a draft on Thursday night, I think. And, and then back here, I think it's on Monday. I, oh, beautiful. Yeah. I'm all for just 18 a day. Like I have no interest in playing more than one round a day. Yeah. Like uh, you, you tee off around 11, 12. Yeah. So you get, so you get plenty doing. of sleep. Yep. And then you have yourself an evening. Yep. And then you get, you know, six, seven hours of sleep. And you get to enjoy the resort yeah. a little bit. 36 and, holes. And you're not just completely fucking dead when you come home. Like sometimes you go on yeah. these golf and you come home and you're like, dude, I need a week. It's like going oh, to Vegas. Yeah. It's, it's, but maybe worse. You just don't stop because you're walking the whole time. It's not a vacation. You're like you're no. coming back. Like the, the trips that I've done. I mean, most I hate to keep bringing up his name, but it is his fault. Ken Holland, the GM of the Oilers. <laughs> I mean, you go on this guy's trips and like when I went to, it wasn't last summer, the summer before we went to Europe and it was whatever. I think came in here and we talked about it a little yeah. bit. It was like, and I wasn't even there for the whole trip. I didn't do any of the optional golf. And it was, I think I was there, I'm going to get it a little bit wrong, but it was 12 days, and I think I played 19 or 20 rounds. Like, oh, I came and back. And that's walking and those things in, like, walking. wind and cold. Oh, yeah. It's like playing band in 36. Oh, yeah. So you get done with that, and you're just like, I'm, it's a wrap. Yeah, and then mix in my horseshit golf game. It's like, I mean, I don't own my swing. So it's like you get hot for a couple. It's just way too much golf. You get hot for a little bit, maybe. And by a little bit, I mean, like, Maybe you put four swings together and you get a par or something like that. Maybe a, a good following tee shot. But, like, you're just grinding it out and you get tired and you're blasting the ball in the fucking bush. And <laughs> Yeah, it's more of a who's, like mental. Who's going to be the mental image of the swing this week down at Cabo? Because you've had Hideki in the past with yeah, the pause. Yeah. You've been going cooch with the putter. Cooch Up with the, the putter is still there. Yeah. What are you well, doing with the ori original Are you cooch. going reverse? No, 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 no. no reverse no. lean? No, no, no. Oh, no. Original cooch. cooch. Yeah, like yeah. literally the first model of that Bettinardi. Yeah, yeah. That's a constant. That's the one thing in my golf game that is actually decent. Like I'm, I can't say I'm like proud of it, but I, putting I'm not worried about. It's everything to get to the green is what I'm worried about. Um, but no, Hideki's gone. 
but I'm making another little change here. Oh boy, Breaking who, we news. who we got? Well, Talk I don't me. know who it is. You guys can pick the golfer because I don't know who would it be. But I was hitting ball. I was I got side. I got a kind of hot for a little bit in the summer. Got it down to like a one, and then it exploded again. And it's been over the year. I was trying to get rid of the over the top. If that makes sense. Yeah. Try and hit the ball from shallower. the inside. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's happened over the last two three years is now I'm coming from the inside, but it's totally incorrect. And it's like when I get on like the little track man or hit in the simulator, like let's call it like an eight iron. I mean, I'm coming inside like six degrees. Yeah, that's not good. That's, yeah, that's not, too many. trash. So it's now trash. I'm bringing it back inside. Now I'm just going to accept it. It's over the top. I think over the top is, even though it's not like quote unquote the best, I think it's the most repeatable way. You can play golf, dude, it cuts every time. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm a little steep on it, but guess what? I guarantee you if I aim down the left, it's moving right. And it opens up everything. Whereas with that hook, dude, it's just like this thing's gone quick. Yeah, I don't care how far the ball goes. I just want to be able to hit the next one from some kind of lie. There's been some. Doesn't have to be the fairway. I don't need the fairway. Bruce Litsky did all right with it. Yeah. Doing it like that. KJ Choi did all right with it. Doing it like that. You know what? I went and watched KJ. KJ. I went and watched KJ Choi. So I went to Calgary Hosts, the best champion tour event. It's called the Shaw Charity Classic. I've Mm -hmm. had it for like seven or eight years. I've been there probably four or five. And just, I happened, I went and watched Ken Tanagawa. Yep. And I ended up watching and following KJ Choi for, (laughs) followed him like 10 holes. Do you like what you saw? Man, it didn't look like much. (laughs) I'm like, this guy doesn't hit it anywhere. But I'll tell you what, it was amazing. Like, very simple to, at least to me. It, I forget who he was hit. I think he was playing with Ken and somebody else. But he was like, I'd say a good, good 30 yards behind him. Mm-hmm. He hit a shot, but he was like in the mix in the tournament. Like, he didn't miss. And he hit a shot. It was a long par four into the fan, I think on the back nine. Doesn't matter. But he hit his tee shot in the bunker. He had 205 to the pin, into the fan, and the lip was right there. Not like a massive lip, but like it was there. Something. Yeah. So I'm yeah. sitting there. I'm like, there's no way. What's this guy going to hit like a four iron under the green? There's no chance. Sure as shit. It's <laughs> at six feet, taps it in. I'm like, this guy's amazing. That's it. That's the new oh, swing. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, man, I need to, how do I play like KJ? Mike yeah, Commodore dude. and KJ. Yeah, just get a little over the top with it. I like know. That. It, was, it was amazing. We talked to the caddy. Like those champion tour events are awesome because everybody's a little bit more relaxed. So like, you know, we hung out by the putting green a little bit after and talk, ended up meeting this caddy. I forget his name, but nice guy. And we were talking about that. And he's like, yeah, that was the shot of the day. I'm like, yeah, no you shit. You watch those dudes and you're like, he hits it like I hit. You know, like it looks realistic. Like, oh, I could maybe yeah, like do what he wise. does. You watch Rory Tiago, you're like, well, fuck, yeah, dude. A different, yeah. different game, a different Playing sport. A different game, yeah. yeah, it's 100%. Not, not the same at all. All right, some big news here from Subpar. We have officially launched our own YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe at golf underscore subpar on YouTube. Check out this week's video. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the stuff. Colt, we got some cool behind the scenes stuff coming and uh, give you a little outside look at some of the stuff outside the studio. So, Please like, please subscribe. You're the best listeners in the game. We love you. Back to the show. Well, it is hockey season right it now. Is, yeah. I know yeah. you're, you follow very closely, and you had a nice little early Christmas present, I would say, a few months ago when I your did. good friend got Babs. canned. Yeah. Babs. My I mean, Babs dude, thought. when I heard the news, I was just like, I got it. Got to see Kami. So, got to talk to Kami. Uh, like, Happy Christmas day morning. Your life. Christmas come early. Yeah. Oh, man. Happiest day of my life. So it's kind of a. I mean, I, I, in my wildest dreams, you know, I used to play in Columbus. I have a soft spot for Columbus. I know people in the organization, guys I used to play with. They don't text me much anymore, but <laughs> I'm hoping with over time, you know, maybe I'll be welcome back. I haven't gotten alumni email in a long time. I usually get those all the time. So if any Blue Jacks, please, uh, I'd like to come back at some point when you're ready. Um, but yeah, it was, it happened in September. So I'll get a, I'll break this. So he, what he was doing, and I'll, and I'll speak to it more in a bit. But what he was basically doing is he was going through, you know, be like, oh, let's say you're a, you're a, a prospect for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Oh, hey, Colt, and you know, first, you know, camp or whoever you are, and you're like, you know, and then Mike Babcock, pretty big deal. He's won a Stanley Cup, a couple gold medals. Yeah, give me your phone. And you're sitting in there, like, no, huh? Absolutely God, not. No. That is the correct <laughs> yeah. answer. But no. in that situation, a lot of these kids are like, ah, uh, unlock it, give me your phone. Yeah. And so he was going through cell phones, like going through pictures, or if there was a TV in here, he'd be like, yeah, uh, unlock that phone, hit airplay, and put your camera roll up on the TV here so I can see what you've been up to this summer. That's what he, yeah, 
Yeah, and I mean, some of these young kids probably got some interesting stuff on there. 100%. Yeah. I mean, who knows what's on yeah. there? And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's a complete invasion of privacy and it's none of his business. But I had heard a little bit about it. So back it up to the first week of August, I heard about some of this stuff, about him going through phones. Now, I didn't know for sure, but it was, it was coming from, not from any of my buddies, but I had heard. And so I had a couple tweets loaded up at the beginning of August. I'm like, I am going <laughs> to roast this, this loaded dude. Clip. Oh, it's just oh. ready. Like, I mean, I had them ready. I had two, I had one <laughs> saved. I had the next one and I'm right about to hit send. And I sat there and I'm like, you know what? I'm like, A, I don't want to, if I'm Mike Babcock and I see this stuff, you know, I'm going to be thinking where, where's this coming? Like, how does, how does this guy know? He's not in, like, then you know, if I'm him, I'm probably looking around and be like, well, you know what? One of my assistant coaches, Jared Bull, Mike played with him for three years. So I didn't want, and, but I didn't get any, any information. You might be him. working on an alibi. Right. You give him a, you tip That's not where hand. I got my information, yeah. but I didn't want, so I didn't want to get him in trouble. So it was that combined with, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? I mean, this has been going on with me now for like eight years. I'm like, most people that don't know me think that I'm just have some kind of psychosis with Babs and it's all I think about. And <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I have thought about it way too much, but it's not like I wake up every morning and I'm like, fuck Babs. Like, that's not what's going on. Like, I'm tired of it, but I can't get away from it. Um, cup of coffee and a Babcock. A uh, cup of coffee day. and a yeah, Babcock. Good way, good, way, the day. good way to start the day. A little lighter. So I decided, I'm like, you know what? Anybody who reads this from me, they're just going to be like, this dude's crazy. And that's going to be the end of it. So I'm like, I'm just going to wait. I'll wait till like maybe the middle of the season. I'm sure he's going to keep doing this. Maybe I'll hear some more. So then a month goes by and I woke up. It was, I think, the morning of whatever, September 13th, 14th. And I w wake up and I got a bunch of miss missed text messages on my phone. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I look and it's like, hey, have you seen this? <laughs> Get a load of this. Well, it was Paul Bissonnette. Mm -hmm. I got this information. So he goes live with it on Spit and Chicklets. So I'm reading this and this is some of the stuff that I heard. And I read this and then, you know, he had pushback from the NHL, pushback from the Blue Jackets, pushback from the NHL PA on like, you're full of shit, you're lying, that didn't happen. And Biz, thank God, like it would have been easy for Biz to like just back off and be like, yeah, you know what? But he's like, no. Biz like doubled down and tripled down and start posting like, you know, images of text messages, not with names or anything, but this is where I got it from. So he's doubling, tripling down. I'm reading this, I'm like, oh my God, this is perfect. Spitting Chicklets is a massive platform oh, yeah. in hockey. Bissonette's on TNT hockey on Thursdays and he's not backing down. So I'm like, people are going to listen and this is a perfect opportunity for me to just pile on. So that's what I did. <laughs> I just piled on biz, go right ahead. Biz ran with it. And yeah, you know, it, it, what he ended up doing was like this guy, I mean, he can't help himself. He's got a problem. He's a bully at the end of the day. I don't think he really cared what was actually on the phone. I think it was just the fact of, Hey, like, like I'm authority, you, like you're going to show yeah, me cause I'm going to tell yeah, you, you know too. what? Oh, you're the, oh, you're the third overall pick of the Columbus blue jackets this year. Man, you know what? I'm the head coach of this team. Kiss my ass. Give me your phone Man. and you do it. That's what I think he was more getting off on. But regardless, it's a huge breach of privacy. And so I'd heard after this was f firing off, like, you know, well, first off what he, I mean, Mike Babcock gets another opportunity at the end of the day. Does he know hockey? Sure. Can he run a practice? Sure. Has he been successful? Sure. You could also make some arguments that he had some pretty good teams, but I won't even go there. He, he's had a pretty good career. <clears throat> he gets another chance, even if his teams are just decent. And all he has to do is just like, don't be an idiot. Don't be a bully. You be hard on the players, but don't do shit like that is basically what you have to do. I mean, he's 60 years old. He coaches for another 10 years, makes minimum another $40 million, and probably finishes number two on the all-time coaching win list. Is probably first ballot Hall of Famer, no questions asked, right in. This dude gets hired July 1st. And within, I think Blue Jackets prospect camp started sometime that week, within a couple of days. Within like two or three days of him getting hired, he was like, prospects come in, so these are kids that like just got drafted in the draft. They're, they're 18, maybe you have a couple 19-year-old kids in there. Within two or three, as soon as camp started, he started pulling this shit with these kids. And he kept doing it. 
and then, you know, he was, I mean, he's not a total, well, he is an idiot, but <laughs> you know, what he was doing, you know, with these prospect kids, he's like, what I imagine he's doing is, you know, with people that he's got power over, he's like, yeah, open up your phone, put your picture, their pictures on the TV, you know, with veterans, like, it, yeah, with like Johnny Gaudreau and, you know, th there was a press conference with the general manager, like. I couldn't even watch it. I'm like, he, the general manager's like, well, I don't think he had any ill intentions. Like, he did the same thing with me. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. The, the GM's name's Yarmo. I'm like, oh, really, Yarmo? I'm like, you, you're no telling me when, when Mike Babcock came in to get a job, he came in and, and said, hand your phone over. I'm going through your pictures. You're, are you telling me that's so what? It's the 19-year-old kids that just got drafted. Well, we that's what he was we doing then. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, anyways, it was a bunch of bullshit. But anyways, he... He gone. He's gone. And I think vindication I, I think it's, for you, by the way, vindication. Yeah. You know, and I'm hoping like I'm hoping that's it. I mean, I'm exhausted. I, it's gotta be. I mean, I can't see anybody else giving him a chance. I mean, I, I mean, I could care less about the hall of fame stuff, but I know for sure he does. And mm -hmm. if he just of wouldn't course. have coached again, he probably has a chance numbers wise. He probably, I mean, he, he's been successful, but I mean, if character, I mean, I forget exactly what the, the, the wording is, but, you know, in order to get in the Hall of Fame, it's not just on ice, it's oh, your yeah. character and what you've done off the ice and stuff like how you carry yourself. If character truly is a part of, a, a decent sized part of getting into the Hall of Fame, he ain't getting in. I don't, he's not tell getting me, nominated. Tell me about the guy that dressed up as him on Halloween in Dallas. Oh, yeah, this oh, was great. Dude. Great. Like, also, when you were in Columbus, it was a side of one of the best pitchers. You, Standing by the ice girls. When you Google you, that's what comes up. Oh, that's You're when I got this big scar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking to the ice girls. That was fantastic. That, but who was the guy that dressed up as him? Because he did a great Babcock. It was unbelievable. Yeah, so, it was so yeah. good. Who was it? Where'd you find this guy? I, I've never met the guy. So we have a mutual friend that I used to go to Vegas with. Well, not with. We used to have, we used to do like, this is back in the early 2000s, early mid 2000s. Um, Jerry Bruckheimer would have a hockey tournament in the summer in Vegas. So anyways, I met these guys there, you know, you come friends, mutual, you know, but it's not like I talk to this guy very often. Justin is his name. And the guy who was Babs is his name's Joey. I think it's at the real Joey Mayo on Instagram. Anyways, I don't know anything about any of this. And I wake up to a text message and he had sent a little clip of the, this was right after, cause he has a press conference. He does a press conference after Babs resigns, gets canned, whatever. And so I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh my God, this is, that is the funniest video I think I've ever seen in my life. So retweet that a little bit. And then the morning of this Stars game, so I thought it was kind of Stars, Blue Jackets, I think it was the day before, it, it was Halloween, I think, or the day before. Yeah, Halloween. Yeah, it was Halloween, right? So I kind of thought, I'm like, wow, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, this is a good idea. The guy lives in Texas and he's going to the game. It's Halloween, like everybody will be dressed up, like this will be funny. Well, yeah, he went to the game. Nobody was dressed up except for him. Like, <laughs> but it was hilarious. He like, so his wife, I, I don't even know how he got on. I know he, I mean, he's a hockey fan, but I don't think he has anything personally against Babs. I don't think he's ever met him. He doesn't have anything to do with him. His wife is like a legit, um, like Hollywood um, makeup artist. Oh, wow. So like to put that yeah. on, that's like, it's like Hours. a four, five, six yeah. hour ordeal to do that. So yeah, that day he like, he was, he was sending videos to his buddy. His buddy was picking them, some of them, and sending them to me. So he was he drove three hours into the game, dressed up as Babs, went right in there. His his seat was supposed to be three rows behind the Blue Jackets bench, but within like five minutes of the game, he was right next to the glass. <laughs> and oh, I couldn't stop laughing. And I knew like a couple, like like I said, I know a couple of the coaches on the Blue Jackets. They knew he was there, but they couldn't. <laughs> he had like, his whiteboard out with oh, the marker, drawing the plays, and we gotta talking be better. just like him. Oh, yeah, yeah he's so, taking people's so cell phones. Good. Like, yeah. give me your cell phone. Yeah, let me phone. see that. Let me see yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, a nice picture. That's a nice yeah. view. Is that your, is that your wife? Yeah. Girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was great. And I got a message from Jamie Ben after the captain yeah. of the stars because a couple – he's – you know, and I was posting the stuff too, but he messaged me after on Instagram. He's like, dude, that is, who is that? Yeah. And I'm like, it was man, his images. name's Joey. Yeah. Oh, and he's great. His mannerisms and everything. So yeah, it was fantastic. Best dressed for sure. He was. Um, speaking, you've been dressing pretty well as of late, wearing some fancy socks around town here in Scottsdale. Mm. I, well, I haven't started wearing them yet. Socks yes. are everything. You want to talk? Socks you want to tell them and make a man. You want to tell them how I'm, I'm your sock sponsor? You are. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get Stan's sock sponsor in here or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, well, I mean, can't be leaving your credit card at the bar. Rookie. You know One. I mean? Rookie move. <laughs> We're blaming Taylor. Taylor took my card and hid it in a bush. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, that can yeah, happen. I mean, that can happen too. Yeah. I didn't know. Well, did you know that at the time? No, you didn't. You no. just knew it was gone, right? Yeah, I, I figured I just left it there, which is because we were having a night. We were getting amongst we had, it. We had a night. Went yeah. to ASU football, mm-hmm. right? Watch it. They got to get it together, too. There you go. <laughs> Babs. What asshole was telling us at the bar to bet ASU against, wasn't it Oklahoma State? It was Oklahoma State or Oklahoma. One of the Oklahoma two. State, Oklahoma State early State. in the season. Yeah. Like, it was actually that. a fairly close game. Until the end. Yeah. I they mean, hung they, around. They hung around, but I, I bet them to win. Yeah, ASU's going to win this game for sure. I'm like... ASC, Oklahoma State. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about football, but college, well, any football, but like Oklahoma State's a pretty good football program. Anyways, lost my money there. But so we went to the game. We had a bunch of drinks, went back to Moxie's mm-hmm. after, um, and then all went for wherever from there. That was kind of the end of the night, I think. Yeah. No. And then you went back to get your car the next day. Uh, yeah. We don't drink and drive. No, I nope, went back responsibly. to get, Yeah, I went back to get my car and had to leave it there again. <laughs> uh, that can happen. I too. was all, you know, I still had kind of a little, I don't know what you would call, it, you know, a little leftover. You yeah. know, I didn't sleep all that long. I got there in the morning and then I messaged the guys and I said I was going back to get my truck, uh, probably, and I was going to wander around the mall. So and the Moxies is in the mall, and so Water Colt's sounds. like, hey, like if you go by Moxies, can you get my credit card? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I get into Moxie's, you know, I have a couple of drinks, doesn't take much. Now I got a little buzz and I'm asking, I'm, I'm, right away, I'm like, hey, um, can I get a credit card, Colt Nost? And the girl's like, no, when we open up a tab, like we swipe it or whatever, and we give the card right back. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm like, he said he left his card here. I, I don't know what else to No, tell I didn't know where it was, so I assumed it was there because I tried, when I got there, I tried to buy a round of shots for everybody and she took the card, well, Unbeknownst to me, Taylor Trius snagged it because no, he had a tab open and apparently thought it was a good idea to put it in a plant that was which, on the side. That of the is line. a good idea. Yeah. So that's yeah. what ended up. So they and were they, looking. I thought your card was gone. Yeah. So they went looking for the card. Well, and I, I'm sitting there drinking. I'm like, well, maybe it'll show up. Take I'll your have a time. Of yeah. yeah. Take your time. No I rush. got a pretty good buzz going here. <laughs> I'm definitely not driving my truck anymore. That thing's staying right in the parkade there. And the GM came up to me, said, it just handed me your card. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, where'd you guys find it? He's like, it was in a plant. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. okay. And I didn't know anything about this Taylor Trius stuff. So I'm like, hey, Colt, I got your card. Now, I will say this was funnier at the time than the next day. <laughs> it was funny. Well, at the time, I thought it was hilarious. So as I'm walking out, I'm going to go, I was going to go do a lap through. I don't know. I was going to wander around for a little bit, get an Uber and go home. And I went by the stance. Well, first off, you paid for your tab. Well, I thought that was fair. That for was, but yeah, no, that, that was pretty picking fair. Picking up the card for I a buddy is like whatever I, I got you, outstanding. You're gonna take your tab it. was 140, and you tipped the bill. <laughs> well, that's how you get invited back. <laughs> that's, how you you get an <laughs> that's how you make friends. No wonder they everybody runs to the door when they see me coming yeah. to Moxie's now. So that's what starts. So we're right about 300 to start the day. Yeah, yeah. Call it yeah 280 to start the day. I go by stance socks, and for whatever because of a couple of cocktails, I'm like. <laughs> Man, I, I could use some socks. Yeah, dude. So I went in there, and I went buck wild on the socks. <laughs> I mean, I was trying every style, just putting in the bag. They were pumped in there. They're like, oh, you really need socks? I'm like, yeah, I do. And so that bill was 576 yeah. I think. Socks. Five and change. You're set now, though, for All socks. Oh, wow. I'm laughing. I think it's funny. On my way out, the guy, you know, the guy selling me the socks was all pumped. And I'm like, on the way out, I kind of. Out of the side of my mouth, I go, hey, it ain't my credit card. And he looked at me, and I just kept walking. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he wasn't going to say anything. And then, uh, yeah, I took, got in the Uber. Still thinking this is pretty funny. I got two bags or th- two or three bags of socks. And then I tried to go get, I think I tried to go get a Diet Coke. And, a, and some and Zins. A, and some Zins. And Colt froze it. And for a minute, <laughs> he froze his card. And for like a minute, I was actually like kind of pissed at him. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> What a pussy. <laughs> and then I kind of think about it. I'm like, yeah. So anyways, we get home. I'm back. Ashley's at home. All these socks. She's like, you got to return them. I'm like, I'm not returning anything. So yeah, that was the end of it. But I have a funny feeling at the end of the day, I think I'm going to be the one that loses in this deal. <laughs> Just because I, you know, I don't want to, I'm not taking your money. I owe you a nice dinner and we'll get close to even. But I have a, I have a feeling that I'm going to end up on the wrong side of this by the end of it because Colt's going to go buck wild at dinner you and got the it. bill's going to be about 1500 bucks. You leave that card somewhere and you ask your friends to go get it. Like It's vulnerable mm-hmm. for that oh. period of time. So you got, I found smileys that uh, some dude walked up to me at the Ryder Cup and he was like, hey, dude, are you, are you going to 
golf guy. I was like, "Yeah, you gonna see Smiley this week?" I was like, "I don't know, probably." Yeah. Yeah, most likely. He's like, "All right, cool." I was at we were at dinner with him last night. He was like with Smiley or whatever. He's like, "Can you give him his credit card back?" I was like, "Absolutely, yeah, I he'll can get give it. That. Hey, he'll get this I thing right." This thing Took down. pictures front and back, sent it to Smiley. I was like, "Bud, don't wait. I'm gonna see you, but you better uh, hurry up." And then I gave back with some charges, but I also have pictures of the front and the back. I was like, might want to do some online shopping there we a little go. bit later. I Keep like that tuck for Christmas. Like you know what I mean? What a nice Just guy to bring it back. Exactly, dude. Gave American it back to him Euro. pretty Not quickly. Say what? Was it American guy or Euro? I was American. Like, oh, I guess you said that. Yeah, yeah. It was like a buddy so from probably. LSU, I think, or something like that. I was like, absolutely, I'll see Smiley now that I think about it. Well, right. when he when he does take us to this very nice dinner, make sure you put in a to go order and I'll bring it to you. So you're really invited. nice. Experience. I like wine to go a lot. <laughs> I don't know about wine you guys. I find the best deals to be at restaurants on bottles of wine. Right, so yeah, yeah, just pick a couple of nice that, ones. Yeah. Just scroll down to I the heard bottom. You, you can get real good deals on bottles of wine. Bottles of wine are on on discount. Yeah, where are we especially this time of year? Where are we going? Well, why don't, we're going to go to Roosters for dinner. Oh, oh well, you treat me to yeah, Roosters. Take him huh? somewhere nice. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Take him hey, a little room and house. some beers. Can't yeah. believe you couldn't get that coke in a Zen, dude. How are you supposed to get home? Make it through the rest of the day. I remember being like, for like five seconds, I was pissed at him. <laughs> that he canceled it? Yeah, there was well, there was kind of That's a line bullshit. behind me, canceled or whatever it says, and I'm like, God damn it, he froze it. But I had my credit card on me as well, so it was okay. You were able to get your Zen and Diet Coke, you bastard. I did get it, yeah. Uh, yeah. You mentioned earlier the Chuck Wagon, which is a member guest you play out in Kansas City every year. Yeah. Um, you frequent Kansas City quite a bit. I do, yeah. Yeah. I actually just had a great trip out there. Uh, well, who did the Chiefs play? Well, uh, this was about six weeks ago. Yeah, you had your Chiefs game and also Sporting KC. Yeah, it was awesome. That our friends own. Yeah. What would you say is a more dangerous town for you, Vegas or Kansas City? It, to me, it's not even close. It's Kansas City. <laughs> That's because all like, the doors are open Oh, my in God. Kansas City. It's like straight that. fantasy land. Yeah. What do you I want? Mean, I had, I'd like to take a couple snaps. Oh quarterback, can you guys arrange that? <laughs> oh, it's like. I feel like I can move around know, a bit. Pat, I'm like, man, I might be able to be a tight end in the NFL. Of course you could. Yeah, I think I might be the goalkeeper for Kelsey, sporting tonight, maybe. Take a couple. Take a breather, kid. <laughs> take a breather. Yeah. I got go, this. Go, go hang out with your go girlfriend. Go text Taylor. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> yeah, Kansas City is awesome. Chuck Wagon was good. Uh, Mike and I got, uh, Mike Illig and I are always partners. This year was the first year that we got bounced out of the championship flight. So we were the top dogs in number two. Uh, number two was very competitive. Long story short, Mike and I went on George Brett's son, Jackson. They were leading the flight. It was tight. Uh, we were all square. It was like a nine-hole match point thing. So through five, all square. Uh, or no, we were down one with four to go. And Mike and I went, well, Mike did, and I chipped in with a good, real good par uh, to win the hole. We went birdie, <laughs> my par. Great par, par three. Great. That's, a, that's a big one. One of the, the toughest momentum. par yeah. threes in the world. Uh, <laughs> 140, no trouble. <laughs> Pin, pitching wedge. 12 Ten, on, 12 right from the, the left, 12 yeah. from the right. Uh, it was it was actually a pretty tough hole. Not that hard, but it was tough. Par won the hole. So, uh, And then Mike went birdie, birdie. So we birdied three of the last four with a par to flip the match, go three up. We were three behind them to start. So we were flat. So it ended up being a four-way tie for first. Mike and I thought we were going to be in. And we ended up losing in, like, however they do, the like a count back or some kind of thing, whatever. We no, were I out. I said, this guy's drunk. We don't want him to play anymore. Yeah, that's true. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, could, could be. be. Could be, actually. Could be, yeah. Yeah, Mike and I made, we made, two years ago, we made the shootout. That was our, we won the championship flight. Uh, we made it down to the last two. And we got screwed, Mike. I, I just don't bring it up anymore because uh, this is—I don't know if I've ever seen Mike Illig this mad. It was a—I uh, don't know. Have we talked about this before. No. Oh, I've heard the story. You have, yeah, oh, okay. but not. On I can here. shorten it up real not quick. On here, yeah. Won the championship flight, make it to the shootout, get down to the last two groups. The group we're playing against won it the year before. I think there's a little, there's some question marks there. I, I didn't, I don't know them. I don't know their names right now. Uh, so it's one on one. We're on a par three. It's alternate shot. I go, f no, Mike goes first, kind of chunks it, but front of the green, we got like, call it a, no, I hit, sorry, I chunk it, <laughs> my bad, I chunk the thing, I chunked it. but I chunk it onto the front of the green, probably like a 40 foot putt up the hill, they like hit the green too, I mean, these guys are like, these are like 12 and 14 handicaps, we were playing like heads up with them for like two, three holes, nobody missed a shot, I'm like, oh, is this guy 12, I'm like, this guy's better than I am, I'm a two, apparently, anyways, no big deal, you gotta play like a champion, uh, they yank it. They're pin high. They got about 30. We're away. So like a 40 footer and a 35 footer. 
Mike putts it, leaves it like five, four or five feet short. Now it's my turn to putt. But, and this is where Mike gets pissed. Now, at the end of the day, I got to get up and make this putt. Right, you're a champion. Yeah, everybody's watching. There's mm -hmm. a lot of heat. Lights. A lot of heat, yeah. And I'm feeling good over this putt. I'm like, this is the one thing I can do is putt. So get over this thing. Like, you know, you have to hole out before they go, which that's kind of questionable right then and there. So I'm, I got, I'm like, I'm going to make Changes this Changes everything. Yeah, big time. So I get up over this, I steam this thing over the top edge. Mike's got a further foot coming back for bogey. <laughs> <laughs> Mike makes it, we're in with four. They So now the continuous putting, when it's down yeah. to two, I, I don't really agree with that. And then, so they putt, the guy leaves it. It was like, it was probably like two feet. I mean, this is a missable putt. Mm -hmm. Gave it to him. Mike like, did? No, <laughs> Mike wasn't given, no. Said, oh, they the gave guy, it to Yeah, him. said, ah, pick it up. God, it's like Ricky at Mike, the Ryder Cup. Oh, my God. I, a, I felt terrible. I wasn't even really paying attention because I'm like, man, I blew it. I know Mike would love to win this event. Like, that was our opportunity. I blew it. So I was down, not really paying attention. Mike's like borderline about ready to go nuclear on this on this golf course. <laughs> He's rattled. I'm like pouting in the corner. In the I wasn't pouting. I just needed a couple drinks. Guys are coming by. Ah. Always next year. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, thanks. Stanley Cup champ. Like, hey, oh, keep your head up. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. life's going to be like, okay. Oh, man. <laughs> um, but yes, Chuck Wagon's always fun. Yeah. Also, one of the trips, I believe, where you made George Brett take his shirt off. I saw that. Bit. You guys saw that? Yeah. That did you make him or did he? No, I feel like that's no, a no, George no. volunteer situation. I, Mike Commodore is not going to make George Brett do anything. <laughs> George not Brett, in that town. Not in, not in any town, but especially, town. especially not that town. We went to this. It worked out great. I, we had this trip planned. Uh, me, a buddy that I played college hockey with, um, Chad Mazurk, and a few of There was like, uh, I can't remember, three, I think it was four guys with me. Four or five, five guys with me. Anyways, um, we met in Kansas City. We had this all planned out. These guys are big Chiefs fans. They've been going for years, except for the COVID years with China does rules then. But <laughs> well, that's another this topic. We'll talk about that later. Um, so we have this trip all planned out for like six, eight months. We get there and it just works out where Mike has a sporting game. And it just turns out it's the last game of the season. Sporting started the game or season like 0-10 or something. They didn't win a game until like their 11th game. Um, and they had last regular season game. Uh, if they won, they got into the play-in. So they would finish ninth. So it was eight for then they were going to play. This was Saturday. If they win, they play Wednesday. So Mike's all fired up and going there with Mike. Like he's the owner of the team. So like I said, I'm like, Doors are if, open. if this goalie's struggling, maybe <laughs> yeah, I'll go try yeah. being a goaltender in MLS. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, owner's pass. It's awesome. It's a great time. So George came and, uh, yeah, we were just, I mean, it was, I think I can't remember what the score of the game. That wasn't the penalty kick game. It was a close game. Anyway, Sporting scored. I was just talking to George. Like, we were having a couple of drinks. There was nothing. I didn't say anything. And all of a sudden, George just rips his shirt off and just starts swinging it around. Took a picture. <laughs> this thing kind of fires around. You know, everybody yeah. loves George in Kansas City. That's the best pub they could get for Sporting is that oh. George Brett's that into it that he takes his shirt off and swings oh, yeah. it around when, yeah. they, you know, when they 100%. score. Like, he's yeah. into it. He was fired up. Uh, Leslie, his wife, wasn't too thrilled at the beginning. <laughs> I read a couple of text messages. She wasn't pumped because, you know, if you don't if you do not do a whole lot of stuff online, you know, you, no matter what you post, you're going to have people ripping on it. You're going to have your trolls, your hate, you know. So she was focusing on the one or two Haters. comments from some asshole when then, then every other comment is like, that's awesome. George is into it. So oh, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. That's, he's a Kansas City legend. He's, yeah. yeah. 70 years old. He yeah, looks in great. Incredible shape. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. But great trip. So we did that. Then the Chiefs game the next day. That was fun. Kind of went on the field. That was my first time on the field. We were on the field for pregame. Thank you, Mike. Um, and Donovan, Mark, Mark Donovan, president of the Chiefs. Thank you. Um <laughs> That was my first time on the field. And obviously I know these guys are un incredible athletes, but like being on the field, even just for warmups, it was, you know, I've been on the field for a CFL game. You know what I mean? Yeah, these yeah, guys can move too. Ball. They play some yeah, real ball yeah, up they there. They ball up there. But I will say there was a bit of a difference with just like how big these dudes yeah. are. The offensive How linemen, violent it is, linemen. dude. When you're there, it's like, oh, how do they and make I, it through a play, yeah. a series without how, coming off on a stretcher? fast they are. Like those guys are monsters and they're moving around. I was like, wow, like mm -hmm. that guy's 340 pounds and he's moving around like he's 260. It was, it was impressive. A 4, 940, yeah. 300 pounds. Yeah. It's different. 
it's different that yeah. on the field stuff you get you're, a diff- you're not you get a the smallest cat in the world either so when you get up there and you're like damn yeah you know? I felt small out there for and sure. The, the, like, and slow. The sounds and of the hitting and she's like, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. How yeah. do they ever come back? <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. Yeah. Are you, had uh, another sporting game and it was a great trip. You love to go to sporting events, clearly. Uh, yeah. President's Cup in Montreal this year. Yes. Any interest in going to that? There's going to yes. be some Canadians on that team too. Yes. And Montreal is just Montreal. Montreal be great. That golf. So I've never been to Royal Montreal. Uh, I've never played there. But... Uh, it's not far from downtown Montreal, like 20, 30 minutes. That, that's going to be important for the fun factor. Uh, I was just in Montreal for the first time since I played, so first time in a decade at least. Uh, I was just there for the Flames. Where Calgary Flames were playing the Montreal Canadiens like two, three weeks ago. So it was my first trip in the city. The city is still very, very fun. I've never been. I heard it's, it's really good. It's awesome. You should it's, go. Is it's, that one of, the, in all of Canada, most fun towns? Where's that? It'd be hard to argue with Montreal. That's it, right? Like Montreal's fun. I've been to most of the big ones, and that one's like, dude, this place is Toronto's sweet. fun too. But Montreal's kind of cool because you you also go there and you you're in Canada, but you know everybody's and yeah, English yeah. is fine there. Yeah. But you know everybody speaks French. It's kind of like a European feel there. Everybody gets after it. The bars are open late. Um, yeah, it, it's fun. It would be if I was like making a little list of. You know, if you wanted to go have a good time in, in Canada, Montreal would be in the top two or three for sure. Yeah. I love that. That's going to be good. Yeah, it'll be fun. Be yeah, I would that, love yeah. to go. I went there Maybe once. we can get you there. Yeah. I, I went there so. once. Long story. I'll make it as short as possible about Montreal. Playing golf with a guy in Palm Springs seven months before we go to Montreal for the Canadian tour. He finds out I'm on the Canadian tour. He's like, oh, I own a little spot there in, in Montreal. A little spot. Give me a call okay. when you go to Montreal. I'll make sure I take care of you. Yeah. Grab a couple of your That's buddies. Nice. So I was like, all right, cool. Totally forgot about the deal, blah, blah, blah get a message from uh, an email for, he gives me his card and I okay. run into one of his buddies. He's like, Oh, when you get to Montreal, make sure you call so-and-so. It's great. You haven't reached out. I have not spoken to him okay. in months and months. I'm like, this guy's not even going to remember this, right. but he gave me his card and he's like, email me. I'll set you up. Email the dude. Doesn't say any specifics at all. It's like, all right, you're all set up. My place is called Chez Paris. I don't know if you've oh, heard of this place. What? Okay. Dude, I thought it was like a restaurant or some shit. He's like, grab a yeah. couple of your boys. It's, it's on me. Well, all I ask food. is just take care of my guys. Like tipping the, the, you know, the yeah. guy at the front. And when no you problem. come out, it's like, take care of my boys on the way in, on the way out. Yeah. You're all set, whatever you want. So I grab these dudes. We get to Montreal. And I'm like, you guys ever heard of this um, Chez Paris? And like some of the local dudes are like, what? Like, yeah, dude, that's like the greatest strip club in Canada. I was like, really? Yeah. I apparently know the dude that don't. Anyways, we grab like three or four dudes. We go in there, like blitz through our practice. I'm like, we're going. Yeah. We get there like two in the afternoon. Oh, I'm like, oh, it's going to be the C team. You know, this ain't yeah. going to be the, everything. We get in there. I don't know what time we left, but we, we got to the end of the night and I was like, boys, if this is, if I have a misunderstanding here and this isn't on the house, like we're going to be scrubbing <laughs> dishes for the next six <laughs> months a, to make up for this a time. We had a afternoon. session with some dudes that you guys know too. And I was like, oh my. So at the end, I was like, whatever time it was, it was the middle of the night. I was like, okay, so we're just, uh, we're going to just take up and leave here. Gonna, 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 took good care of the bouncer, yeah. obviously. And like, yeah, he's like, tipped. yeah, he's yeah. like, Jimmy or whatever the guy's name is. Jimmy says, thanks for coming by. I, it. I was like, oh my God, this oh, is the greatest place awesome. in the world. You still the got that guy's car? Huh? I just did it. I guarantee yeah. you. Get this guy's I card. can't imagine that place going out of business. <laughs> Sounds no. like a nice little place to do a subpar episode. Oh my yeah. God. Oh yeah. yeah. So shout out Shay Paris. Shay Paris you know still it, open. Right? Yeah, still, yeah. I've been dude, there. It was, I've been there. We had a, it was like a Tuesday afternoon. I was like, Shay Paris is a popular spot. I don't know thought it was like a steakhouse, but it wasn't. It was different. Shay Paris. It's also hunting season now. And I believe you got your first deer recently. Yeah, congrats, yeah, dude. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Poor filled thing. my tag. What'd yeah. you use? I uh, used a uh, 2019 GMC Sierra. Mm. <laughs> Good <laughs> and, one. Uh, yeah. Good piece of yeah, equipment. I filled my Montana tag. Yeah, it'd been a while. I actually don't think. I think the last time I was on, in a vehicle that hit a wildlife was when I was in junior playing for the Fort Saskatchewan Traders back in 1997. And our bus steamrolled a, a buck. Uh, like, it was a big deer, that one. But we were on a tour bus, bus yeah. yeah so not a big deal um yeah i left uh so i was it was getting towards i wanted to try and get here around thanksgiving so and i'm staying here for a while so i drove drove down 22 hours Jesus. i couldn't leave yeah but i oh. uh, lots of time i'm not in a rush uh but i couldn't leave calgary this was just this past tuesday i recorded clearing the crease in the morning then check kinda, that out yeah packed my bags a little bit i was out of town by uh, about four o'clock and I was going to go to, uh, I was going to Butte, Montana. Uh, that was where I'd get in there about 11 o'clock, call it a day. 
And I was, uh, so it's dark. It's about 9.30 at night. I was in between. There's nobody on the high. I mean, Montana is the greatest state to drive in. I mean, you just pin it. Yeah, there's no. There is a speed limit there now. Is speed there, limit. Used there used to be, not be a speed limit. There used limit. to not yeah, be like in the, the, the 90s. Back in yeah, the day. I forget what the sign said. It just, it was a sign like speed limit, no speed limit, but it said, God, I'd have to look it up. But anyways, no speed limit. Now it, the speed limit on those interstates is 80 or 85. Damn. I mean, you are moving. Yeah, because right? there's no, I mean, most of the time there's nobody. There's no. I mean, dude, there. you're by yourself. It's like, you're how fast yourself. do you think you can go yeah. and be safe? Yeah. So I was in between uh, Great Falls and Helena. Uh, 9.30 at night, pitch black, kind of a mountain road. So I wasn't going 85. I was probably going about, I was going around a corner, probably going about 65 maybe. Anyways, come around the corner, headlights, two deer. I'm like, oh shit. And so I was in the right lane and I couldn't, if I turned any further right, I was going to flip the truck. So I wasn't doing that. And if I went left, instead of hitting the one deer, maybe I was hitting the one in the left lane for sure. And then maybe hitting the cement guardrail, and I didn't know what was on the other side. So I'm like, I'm staying in this lane. And the deer took one step, so it's right in the middle of the lane. I'm like, sorry, Bambi, you're going to get Tough it here. break, buddy. So I tried to last second. I, I'm like, I got to square this thing up, right? I don't want the last thing I want to do at 9 30 at night in the middle of nowhere in the mountains is hit this deer like on the left, in front of my left tire and clip the thing. Then maybe my alignment's off. The bumper gets pushed back into the tire. So I did like a little adjustment right at the end. You know, you get in, you get in deer, up deer and headlights. Yeah, the, the old saying. So I'm like, I'm squaring this thing up. So I smoked this deer. And I mean, you can look at my truck outside. Dead center. Steamroll mm. this thing. Run right over it. I don't even consider stopping. It was a dangerous place to stop anyways. Not that I think there were any cars around. but uh, Poor thing. I know. I did feel bad for a second, but it was either him or me. It's good. Yeah, dude. You know, there's only one commie. Yeah, it's lots of deer. Yeah, dude, it's not lots the worst way to go. He gets to go up to deer lots heaven deer. and say, "My comment, my yeah. commodore took me out." It was quick. It, it would have been the end of the road for that guy immediately. But yeah, then I was kind of worried. I'm just so I keep going, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" You know, I let go of the wheel just to see if it's pulling. I'm like, "Okay, the steering's good at least for right now," and then I'm just waiting. I mean, I probably have a, an hour drive still to get to Helena and then Helena to Butte's like another, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes or something like that. So I'm just waiting for one of these gauges, you know, to Some or steam or, yeah. but you know, I tell you what, GMC trucks just kept going. Nope. It's a little banged up, but had no problems getting here straight to Scottsdale. Wow. Yeah. Just flushed. I should be spun. Oh, fl- dead. Just yeah, dude. I mean, dead look at center. you. Safety's Just like my be, iron shots. You killed a bird. Truck's still shadow. running. Bird at shadow. Oh yeah, yeah, you got that bird. Mm-hmm. How that all go down? Heard that a wasn't lot. Of, so heard a lot about that. Oh, that was embarrassing. That was one of the most embarrassing days. If Give I us- cared more about golf, uh, <laughs> this, really, this is hard to do, no matter what. Really drunk. Thought I was really good the night before. Made all kinds of bets that I had no <laughs> no business betting mm-hmm. at all. I was mm-hmm. trash. I think I might have slept for an hour, hour and a half, if at all. Started drinking outside the Starbucks there at Cosmo. Were we at the Cosmo? Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, I couldn't sleep. There was oxygen in those rooms or something. <laughs> Go to the T. I'm like, oh, man, I don't feel great, but I'm going to have a great day today. Was not a great day. Like, It's been a long, I can't remember the last time I did it. Maybe as a kid. Uh, first par five, I like literally whiffed my tee shot, like, like missed the ball with my driver. Yeah, it can happen. Yeah, pretty, I got a bogey though. Pretty good nice. bogey. Hell of, yeah, hell of it's a like bounce a birdie. Back. Yeah. Uh, and then the next, it was the next par five, I think. I cold topped the or well hit the worm burner or whatever, and they have those road runners around there. And uh, I don't know if I hit the road runner in the neck or in the side of the head, but straight down. <laughs> And that was not an. I felt terrible about that's that. That's a little different than a deer standing on the road like Dude, this guy's just was minding like, his business. Shit, it wasn't dead right away. Uh, like it was, yeah, it was terrible. So if you lost old, every bet, like you got to deal with death on your mind oh, the rest of the day. Yeah, you're whipping drives. You got to. You took a life. I mean, I how are you know. supposed to play golf? They should have given me a massive blue light, but I had to pay every dollar. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I literally think if you would have added them up, I think I shot 140. It's oh, hard to get a live animal. Yeah, I couldn't. If you're a live animal, look out for my Commodore. Yeah, He's coming. Yeah, the kids, the kids going right We're now. We're going to get a call mm-hmm. from PETA after this episode comes out. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. Well, Kami, dude, always fun catching up Thanks with you. Thanks a lot you, for man. having me. We yeah, always love you. You're, you're yeah. more than welcome, dude. Hey, I'm around. The hair looks 
Are we bringing it all the way? I feel like it's tightened up a little bit. You were letting it go for a while. I was letting I it go. It. Went and got a haircut uh, down at the Biltmore a couple days ago. Uh, but yeah. Well, the, the new girl didn't think I could still do it. You know what I mean? Because I was you going with the shape. She thought I'm you like, lost it? Like, you kidding me? I still got it. Let still it go for it. a bit. I know. And let all it right. go up top. And then you get recognized all the place. Yeah. You can't and Uber anymore. It's going to be a whole thing. Place. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. You're probably smart. Play it like yeah, that. Play yeah, like yeah. that. Go right in the middle. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I'm looking forward to our very, very expensive dinner. Yeah. Rooster. Yeah, yeah for Rooster. sure. I'm going to for sure answer yeah. the phone. All right. Mike Commodore, ladies <laughs> Thanks, and gentlemen. Tequila's so great, too. Love Ooh. you, kid. All right. That was the one, the only Mike Commodore joining us. Always fun to sit down with the big fella. I mean, it's something. I think we got to have him on at least three or four times a year. I think it should be quarterly. Just update with even if nothing's going on in the world, nothing going on in the world. Spring them on, Tommy. What have you been doing? Because it's always good. There's it's always, always some shit. There's always some shit happening with Tommy. Never a dull moment. Always fun sitting down with the one, the only, the beautiful Big Red Mike Commodore. We'll be having him on in 2024 once again. All right, let's get to some gambling. Good. Before that, what's not a gamble? Make sure you do go to fairwayjockey.com. Seventy five percent off all Birdie Juice merch until this Friday. Beautiful. Yeah. Like we said, 75% off, right. only 25% well, on. And if you follow our picks, you'll probably win some cash and you'll be able to spend it. Yeah. Or unless, you might lose. If you follow my no, football picks sure. last week, probably <laughs> lost a, a grizz as I did. Shout out. Go Tigers. LSU got the job done for me. Sneaky. Sneaky on that one. Line moved around quite a bit. Ended up winning by 12. I got a push on that. But uh, yeah, from the opening, if you got on it from the jump. Chicken. Mm-hmm. So well done by you. My pick. I just can't get hot in these in these sleeve special picks. Like win one, lose one. Bama. Which it was has been rolling. Auburn has not been rolling. Iron Bowl, especially at Auburn, you got the kick six. We'll throw this one into the mix. Fourth and goal from the thirty-one. It's unbelievable. I mean, they're ready to explode in Auburn, and then that happens. All right. Well, uh, since we're talking about football, they lost a Grizz yeah. on that game. We might as well give our football picks for the week. Okay. Conference championship games. Um, probably the biggest one: Washington and Oregon rematch. Washington won earlier in the year. Oregon has been rolling. Bo Nix has been fantastic. But the Huskies are getting nine and a half a lot. in Las Vegas. That is a lot of points. They beat them once. And I know things have changed a little bit. A lot of people are saying Oregon's going to get in the playoffs. They're the better team. It's fine. But you already lost this team once, and now you're getting nine and a half. Give me the points. It's hard to beat a good team twice. And Washington's had some tough games. I don't need like, them dude, to win. The, the <laughs> Apple Cup, up. that was a... Washington State's been doing nothing of late, except they beat Colorado. That game was unbelievable. I mean, Washington going for it from their own side of the field, fourth and one. If you don't get this, game's probably over. They're kicking a field goal. Boom, playoffs gone. They pulled it out. They've been in some close ones. I looked at this game, too. It's the best probably matchup of the weekend, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to go with the under. And it's 63 and a half. And it's just these big games, playoff implications, both sides. I just feel like it slows down. It's not quite the shootout that you get maybe in the regular season. I'm going to go with the under. Uh, okay. On that, so we're Oregon on playing game. good defense, and they run the ball a lot too. Uh, give me the undie. So you want to get really greedy? Parlay Washington double, and the under. Double whammy. Love that. Mm-hmm. All right, golf is back this week after a one week break. Tiger Woods is in the house. Probably the first time in his career, he's had the longest odds to win a tournament. He is dead last on the betting board down there at the Bahamas at the Hero World Challenge, going off around eighty five to one. Next best, Lucas Glover, 55-1. to 1. So quite a bit of difference. They're not expecting much out of Tiger. Uh, do you think that's getting any tickets at the booth? Tiger yeah. to win yeah. at 80-1, to 85-1? to 1? Yeah, that's going to get a lot of them. I mean, honestly, in terms of expectations, like, dude, if he if he finishes, if he beats three guys, I'm like, wow, that's really good. He hasn't played since April, basically <laughs> trying to see if he can walk 72 holes and get it done. I don't, I don't expect a whole lot. Just the fact that he's playing is sweet. But in terms of performance, uh, tough field. Yeah, Not a lot of them, but they're pretty good. Yeah, very good field. I will just a little side bet between you and I, if you want friendly hundred, I'll take him to top twenty. You know what? You're I never turn down a good bet. <laughs> You're on. All right, well, I need a, two to one odds though for the guy that's going to win. In my opinion, much different odds. Going off at eight to one. Started working with Mark Blackburn recently. They worked together. He won his first start over at the Zozo. Give me Colin Morikawa to okay. get this thing done. Okay, fair enough. I'm going with my favorite. Going off at eight to one as well. He's the only guy. Whose last start was a major championship win, and that is Max Homa becoming the king of Africa down there with our guy Benny Marsh on the bag. Benny will not be on the bag, so he's gonna have to adjust to having Joe on there. But playing good golf, staying sharp, eight to one, I'll roll it with Max. God, what if he goes down there and plays bad? You think Max might be calling Benny and being like, say, "Hey, bud, Joe's job in jeopardy. Guy goes down, one and done, wins a major. 
Can't ignore that. All right. Well, that's our picks for this week. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see these beautiful golf bags we have right here, which we got the chance to carry the other day. Actually, we were caddies. We've got a very special video coming for you on Wednesday where we were out at Whisper Rock Golf Club, home to yourself, me, our three special guests, Joe Scovern, Joe Griner, and Jim Bones Mackay on the call. I caddy for Joe Griner. You caddy for Joe Co Scovern. We're not going to spoil any of it, but it's a lot of fun. You get to see me and Sleaze um, pretty much being the best caddies ever. I think it was a great learning experience for both the Joes. Mm -hmm. Like They've been out there. They've been around the blog. But to see two elite caddies in their element, here's how you handle players psychologically i feel like they you know they picked up a lot of a lot of pointers there a good learning experience for both of them and a, just a hell of a match all the way through to the end yeah we got a chance to try out this beautiful new ogo shadow premium golf bag so comfortable to carry so light all kinds of pockets great pockets carbon fiber legs that are so sturdy if you throw a little temper tantrum no problem at all the premium stitch handle it's got it all yeah, if you're in the market for a golf bag uh, this holiday season, this is a good one right here. Premium everything, leather, carbon fiber legs. It's got pockets for everything. It's light. You and I used it. We put on a hell of a show out there, but uh, get one for yourself. Get one for your friends. The perforated molded hip pad. Perforated is key. It is key. Duh. Stay tuned for that video coming out Wednesday. It's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. You're going to enjoy it. And thank you all for listening. As always, we'll talk to you on the next subpar.